All right, here we go. Today we are painting a Myria in Battle Pod figure. I'm not going to even try to pronounce the name of said Battle Pod. But this is for Palladium's upcoming Robotech Tactics miniature game. And um, this was a pre-release from Gen Con. So we are starting in the airbrush booth. That's due to all the very smooth, rounded surfaces on this figure. Very difficult to use a brush on. So um, I don't normally airbrush detail onto figures, but that's what we're doing today. And the reason why I'm talking over this entire bit and not telling you what I'm doing is because I kind of redid this spot. I started with some Tamiya green and uh, decided it was way too dark. So we can kind of ignore this step and go right into the next one. And for the second try at the base coat, I just mixed in a little bit of Tamiya yellow with my Tamiya green. And uh, this is a much lighter color, closer to what I was looking for. And we're just going to leave that previous green in the recesses. So giving it a good coat all over with the Iwata Eclipse. To pick out the edges of the armor, I mixed in even more yellow to the previous mix and turn the PSI all the way down to just five. So very small amount of paint uh, coming through. And I just went around and hit the edges of all the uh, what is going to remain green armor. And um, my idea behind painting this thing is to go for a cartoon look from the cartoon, obviously, rather than a realistic look. So um, you'll see later on as this comes becomes more apparent uh, we're not going for a gritty, realistic, weathered look, more of a clean, cartoonish uh, look, something you would see back in the 80s. Back to the paint desk now and doing some very crisp edging on the side of the figure here. Um, I had to mix up something from my Vallejo paints to match the Tamiya ones I just used. So I just took a little bit of a uh, park green, I want to say, or it could be deep green, I believe it was, no, no, it was park green, that's it, uh, mixed in with some yellow, and that gave me a lighter shade than what I had with the Tamiya, and so I'm just going around and edging out all the uh, armor, this is kind of the same technique look that you see on a lot of the GW40K miniatures nowadays, where they just edge everything in a very bright color, so that's what I'm trying to do, and um, Notice the side of the brush I'm using. I'm not using the tip. I'm using this thing almost at a 90 degree angle to uh, get this edging done. And uh, I could have done this at the last step, and I did have to clean it up in the last step, but I wanted to do it now, at least to get some of it out of the way. The next step is using straight black to... Uh, there's going to be some black on this figure that I've been I'm painting right now and also again going for the cartoony look I want um, the recessed panel lines on this figure to be pure black so even between ones that are going to be green and white I want a pure black line uh, separating just like you would see in a cartoon uh, so again we're going with a caricature stylized, stylized cartoonish uh, paint job here, not a realistic one. So even the areas that are I'm not planning on painting black, I am still painting black currently because I want that crisp black line. To highlight the black bits, going with some uh, Vallejo game color somber gray, which now they changed the name to shadow gray. But um, I mixed in a little bit uh, with black to just highlight some of the uh, areas. Not too much, just the uh, back of the feet, some of the protruding areas. And like the top of the, oh, let's call them shoes, why don't we? But then um, using straight somber gray going around and again edge highlighting uh, to bring out those, just the, the edges of all the areas, make a nice crisp cartoony look. So... Um, that's the step right now, and you can see it right on that foot right in front of us there. Um, very prominent edge, more than I would normally do for black, but uh, really want things to pop on this figure. Now 
now that we're done with the black, we're moving on to the white. Um, I should mention that the paint scheme I'm using here, I found online, and I have no idea if it was just fan art or something from some official Robotech uh, book or property. I have no idea. In the cartoon, these guys were just green, and that's it. A uh, very boring paint scheme. I found this one specific for a unit leader of this... Uh, again, I can't pronounce the name of this battle pod. I'm not even going to try. But anyway, that's the scheme I'm looking for. And that was... It was green with uh, black and white with some yellow trim. Okay, exposition over. So, we're painting the white now. And starting off with, uh, again, somber gray. Because need to cover up all those black areas to get a good... Uh, smooth surface with the white so we have something uh, light to work under. With this somber gray undercoat we can slowly build up the white because to get a smooth white surface on these very smooth flat panels it's going to take a lot of very thin layers of white. And the second step in painting white is some Vallejo Game Color Wolf's Gray. And this is going over all the somber gray. Somber gray gives it a nice, good, cool feel to the wolf's gray, which is what we're going for. It also makes covering up. You can cover up with the wolf's gray better under over, excuse me, over the somber gray than you could over black. But the key here is very, very thin layers and lots of them. If it's not covering well, don't use thicker paint. Just use more thin layers. Thicker paint's going to show up thin layer is going to take a while, but we're going to get a smoother result, which is very important on this very smooth surface figure. After about three or four thin layers of the wolf's gray, we can now start mixing in some white. This is actually about, this is about 60% white, 40% wolf's gray. And once again, very thin layers, slowly building it up, and uh, which was really difficult actually. Uh, because it's been really hot here lately and the paint's just drying up instantly so this took a while but again very smooth layers thin, the paint's extremely thin slowly building it up once again that's how you get a smooth smooth surface it takes time and the final step for painting white is of course painting white so, um, uh, this is not really a highlight color. This is, of course, the main body color. So this goes over a majority of what we already painted, just leaving that previous wolf's gray in some of the recesses. Uh, remember, with white, you don't want to overshade it. And with uh, just the same with black, you don't want to over-highlight it. Because if you, over, if you shade white too much, you no longer have white. And if you highlight black too much, you no longer have white black. Keep that in mind. So the base coat for white is white. The highlight for white is white. So on the art I found some of the trim bits on this figure uh, were painted yellow, which I really like because it went really good with the green and it uh, really uh, makes the character figure like this one is really pop out. So to paint yellow we're starting with black. Why? Well, again, I want that nice, crisp black edge. Um, I'm going to be reinforcing this later, but I like to do things twice just to make sure they work out the way I want them to. So uh, all the yellow bits are first getting a coat of black, mainly just so at the end there's a nice, crisp black edge around them. So just like with the white, yellow, you need a good undercoat cover first because the yellow is not going to cover the black just like the white won't. Uh, so one of my go-to colors in this case is Vallejo model color flat earth. Um, I also could have used my um, desert yellow or green ochre works well um, works as well. I'm not sure why I went with the flat earth but works totally fine. Um, it's just less yellow than I should have grabbed but again no big deal. But we're giving this a good coating because it covers the black very well. And then we can move on to the yellow. 
and once again just like with the white slowly building up to our ideal color so that flat earth color got covered with a mix of yellow and flat earth and now we're going straight to the Vallejo deep yellow and once again very thin layers slowly building it up that's how we get a nice smooth bright surface um, rather than a bunch of streaky globbed on paint and for the last step just mixing a little white with that previous yellow color and I was really trying to highlight just the edges but these lines are a bit too thin and difficult to do that but so um, adding a little highlight here and there whether we need it at the top of the backpack and trying to get the the edges of the uh, other insignia and trim so the majority of the painting is done now and I gave the figure a couple coats of pledge with future shine through the airbrush to give a good glossy coat because now we're gonna really reinforce all those seam lines all those panel lines um, and doing that with some testers enamel black that I just thinned with some enamel wash and so essentially I'm reinforcing what I already did with the black paint in the second or third step of this video and I could have just relied on this but um, I like to be sure and I don't like to trust messy washes normally so I want to make sure that all the panel lines were really black but uh, you can skip that first part and just go with this if you like and uh, there you go so just keep the uh, paint thin I use it a bit thicker on the larger panel lines and a bit thinner on some of the other areas you see going around all the yellow trim and all the recesses wherever it needs uh, a bit of shade Try not to coat the entire figure though because that's just more work to take it off in the next step. And now the final step is to just take off the enamel wash uh, from all the areas that I don't want it and we're doing that with a cotton swab. Very just lightly dampened with some enamel thinner and just rubbing off all the uh, all the black where we don't want it and the reason for the gloss coat on the figure is that prevents the black enamel wash from staining any of the areas that I don't want black it makes it a lot easier to clean off and uh, that's basically it just rubbing it down again don't have too much thinner on the swab and also change the swab often because as it starts picking up the paint it's gonna start smearing it around so cotton swabs are cheap replace it you know after a minute of rubbing or once it starts getting really black but uh, that's gonna give us a very crisp black panel lines uh, on on the whole figure and that's gonna be the last step and there we are we have Miria in her Quitzel Bacapatlipica pod from Robotech and again this is very cartoonish look very clean very bright uh, not going for a realistic paint job on this figure uh, wanted to try something a little bit different uh, so it's very bright it's very clean and there's a massive amount of contrast and uh, when the game comes out supposedly in November you can follow something like this or uh, I think I'm gonna go for a more more battle damage realistic look on mine this figure here was actually uh, a paint job I'm doing for a friend. This figure is not mine. Um, I will say, though, that anyone who wants to go out and get this figure, again, this was a limited edition release from Gen Con. This was made out of resin. The actual figures that they're going to release are supposedly going to be styrene plastic. Uh, I would recommend you do not go and try to spend a bunch of money and find this limited edition figure from Gen Con uh, because... Uh, it was $20 at Gen Con, and it should not have come with a written receipt. It should have come with a note of apology, because the casting of this figure was horrid. It took three days of cleaning and filling and sanding just to get it into a, a presentable look. Uh, it was a mess. Again, when the game finally comes out, I believe they're going to be styrene. You have a lot much much more easier time with it so if you're interested in this figure just wait it'll come out don't worry anyway 
as always, thanks for watching.